preparations. Uh, Vicki's got the basket now that I've passed around of just a few types of preparations. Tea is one of the most beneficial and easy to make. When you're using um, leaves, what you do is steeping, which you uh, put the herb in a cup or a teapot and pour boiling water over it and allow that to sit for five or 15 minutes. That's steeping. Make sure it's covered because again, those volatile oils will evaporate. Uh, roots are different. You, you make a decoction, which means that you can boil it for about 20 minutes. So roots, you actually have to do that to extract their properties. You want to boil those for 20 minutes. Capsules are a good way to take bitter herbs. Um, they're easy to make. Uh, you can get what for about $14, a little plastic capsule machine, they call it. And it's not really um, electric or anything. You've got to do the work. But it really helps you fill about 50 capsules at a time. Wow. And um, that's a good way to take a lot of herbs. If you're, you're going to um, run an economical way to make a lot of capsules, that's a good way to go. Tinctures are alcohol based. We're passing a bottle of tincture around. You can open that right up. And that's a very good, very old time remedy way to uh, capture the properties of herbs and use them and keep them for a long time. A good tincture will last about three to five years. So you, you, know, you really can uh, use that for quite a while. There are salves. Uh, I've been making salves since early 70s and it's easy to do. You have some good recipes to do simple ointments and they are a great way to uh, capture the properties of herbs and put them, you know, on your skin. They're most often used topically. How, how do you make a tincture? You just soak the herbs in it? Yeah, good question. Uh, tinctures are very easy to make. Uh, you get the strongest vodka, and you chuckle, that's medicine. <laughs> but it really is a good way to draw, it has a very good drawing property uh, of the herbs. And right now in New York State, you can buy Everclear again. So down at the uh, Dunkirk Plaza, you can go in there and ask for Everclear, which is the strongest vodka ever. And uh, you want to get the strongest potency because it's the purest. So uh, what you do is uh, cover, say you're going to use a quart jar, jar, you can cover your herbs with the alcohol and let it set for about two weeks. And you, uh, just occasionally you can shake it or stir it. And then after the two weeks, strain it. And you have, you're good to go with the great medicine. And there's just so many kinds. And again, one of the advantages of tincture is that the storage life can keep them, keep them for quite a long time. They're administered, as I said, in the case of colds, uh, usually 30 drops to about a half a drop for every two hours. On a maintenance uh, dose of echinacea, it would be more like 10 drops every day. Now, um, now we're going to talk about some of the specific herbs. And I've, I've got a bunch of them to cover, and um, Sarah wants me to uh, talk a lot about garlic, which is, is easy to do. <laughs> so when we get to garlic, we're going to be on that one for a while. Uh, there are many, many tonic herbs that are just wonderful. They're so delicious, really, and beneficial. No side effects whatsoever. They're very preventive. You can drink them often. They're just a great, great way to um, prevent some illnesses that could be coming up. Um, green tea is very common now. That's just great that it's in such common use. That's a great herb. Um, peppermint. Peppermint is an old time tummy tea. It's excellent for tummy upset, uh, headaches. Fennel seeds. We've got uh, some fennel coming around. The seeds are just about ready to harvest now, and that's a, a very old remedy for stomach problems, uh, flatulence. 
uh, kids love fennel. My dad used to go out and grab handfuls of that from the garden and munch it down. It's just delicious. It has kind of a licorice taste. Cannabile, uh, some folks might be allergic to that one. It has a lot of pollen, but uh, mostly uh, it doesn't affect most people. It's uh, of course a wonderful uh, herb for sleeping. It's uh, a very powerful anti-inflammatory. So in case of arthritis, it's a good one to take. It's excellent for digestion. So common chamomile, you'd be surprised. Uh, lemon balm yeah, is... I've got a lot of that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Got to figure out what to do with it. No. Well, I don't know what to do with it. Really, it could take over the world, right? It could. <laughs> it's so prolific, but as the men's are, they work really well in pots. Very good way to keep the pots, keep in control. But um, it's a very strong antiviral. So even for things like herpes virus, stuff like that, it's very good. Cold virus. It's, uh, that's one of its strongest properties. And it's delicious, of course. Catnip, who would say catnip is an herb? It's, it's good for the stomach? It's mostly sleeping. Sleeping? Yes. Wow. It's an old time remedy. It's delicious. It's a very uh, Red clover, I love that tea. That's uh, called a blood purifier. So if you drink that one, it helps uh, reroute toxins to the bloodstream. So it's really delicious. It's even indicated in cancer. Yep. I used it when I went to my change of mind. Did you? And it took all the symptoms away. Could you speak up? Um, I used it when I went to my change of mind. And it really worked. Um, it took all the hot flashes away and the change of changes and all that. That's incredible. It's over. Get red And uh, it's, uh, they ex extract um, isoflavones for menopause from there. It's a really good herb. And we have a plant coming around. You can, now's a good time to pick the blossoms. Enjoy them. Uh, calendula, one of my favorite herbs. There it is. Hold it up for me. It's right here. Notice <laughs> <laughs> right how sticky it is. Kind of sticky. Where would it be sticky? All over. All over? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. uh, that rosin is so good for the skin, and what we do is make an ointment out of that, and it's wonderful for eczema, rashes. It's just a, it's for for hundreds of years, it's been used for skin problems. Now there's stronger herbs, but they're safe, and uh, one of my favorites is Volcacil. Now I want everybody to repeat after me. Do not rate, do not buy wild golden seal. Do not buy wild golden seal. Thank you. <laughs> it is on uh, the sites list. It's an international threatened and endangered species list. And it's actually poached in the Appalachian Mountains. People go in and steal it. Um, ginseng oh, is another. Yeah. They'll uh, try to beat the police, the Park Service police, and they, they'll camp in there. They, they, did, they, they caught some guys recently that had hundreds of pounds of golden seal ginseng. And because it is so over-harvested, it is an endangered species. Now, it is a wonderful herb, so whenever you purchase it, repeat after me, buy farm-raised golden seal. Buy farm-raised golden seal. Thank you. <laughs> It's such a good herb. It's, uh, uh, we use it in our comfrey ointment. It's antiseptic. If you have a sore throat, it's excellent. Uh, one of my friends likes to use the powder, and he gets a straw and sucks up a little golden seal, and he'll, he'll shoot it into your throat for you. There's easier ways to take it. <laughs> that sounds kind of fun. But <laughs> you can put a tincture in water and gargle it. You know, um, it's just a really wonderful herb. A lot of herbs have been are, are still used commercially, and that one I don't know if they still do it, but they used to use it in murine eye drops. It's an excellent eye wash. And what was that one again? Golden seal. Golden seal. Yes. And we're not supposed to buy wild golden seal. Exactly. Right. Okay. 
Okay, and what was the other one we're not supposed well, to? Well, ginseng. Ginseng, yeah. Always yeah. supposed to buy farm Yeah, okay. Jackie, when you use gold and seal for an eye wash, is that a tea? You can use an apple. You can use a tea. Yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. You can make a pretty strong tea. And it helps us.